And now it's time for one of America's newest game shows, But Who's Adding? And here is the host who loves numbers the most, Larry Cedar. Oh. How you doing out there? How are you out here in the audience? All right. You out there in Edition Land, welcome to But Who's Adding? We have a very good show for you today, and we have two great contestants who are going to play. So let's give them a big hand. Bring them on up. Yeah. All right. Now, let's see. Playing blue today is? Felicia. Felicia, how are you doing? Good. Are you ready to play? Mm -hmm. All right. Playing red today is? John. And how are you? Good. Good. You got your teammates ready to play, applaud for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you too? You guys all set to cheer for them? Yeah! yeah. All right, let's check out the rules. This is the big board. Now, the object of the game is to cover three squares in a row with your color, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Now, the numbers on the big board represent the sum you get when you add two numbers from the addend board together. For example, if there's a ring on the four and there's a ring on the five, what number can you cover? Nine. Nine, right, just like that. Now, the player who goes first will move both rings and announce their sum. After that, the next player can move only their color ring and they've got 10 seconds to do it. They can move it anywhere on the add-in board. If you don't do it in 10 seconds, you'll hear this. Right, that means you ran out of time. Also, if you call out the wrong sum or you call out a sum that's already been covered on the board, you will hear this, which means you made a mistake. If you run out of time or you make a mistake, that means you lose your turn and your opponent gets to move both rings. So be real careful about that. Now, the first player to win two rounds wins the game. Red will go first. Are you guys all set to cheer him on? Yeah! All right, red, go. Nine. Nine red. Ten. Ten blue. Oh, oh, wrong color. Seven. Seven red. Three. Three blue. Two. Two red. Oh, what a sensational. All right. Michael, you won the first one. Felicia, you get to start the next round because you lost. Ready, clear the board. Now, you're going to go next, and the next person who wins, you can either tie it up, Felicia, or, Michael, you could win it if you win the next one. The board is almost clear, and there we go. Blue, go. Eight. Eight blue. Ten. Ten red. Six. Six blue. Three red. Twelve. Twelve blue. 17 red. 5 seconds. 11. 11 blue. Oh! Excellent. All right, way to cheer them on, you guys. We have a tie game. This is sensational. Each of you has one round. Michael, you lost the round, so you get to go first. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry, John. <laughs> I was thinking of my brother. Okay, John, you get to go first, and board is clear. Red, go. Nine red. Eleven. Eleven blue. Seven. Seven red. Six. Six blue. Twelve. Twelve red. Good block. Five seconds. Fifteen blue. Thirteen red. Five seconds. Eight blue. Three red. Oh! I gotta tell you, you guys did a great job cheering them on. That was a very, very close match. Congratulations, John, on a good, good game, and you too, Felicia. John, for winning, you get a Square One TV calculator. There you go. And Felicia, for doing such an excellent job, we're going to give you a Square One TV t-shirt. I hope you enjoy that. You guys played a great game. You were a sensational audience. Way to go. We'll see you next time on But Who's Adding? Bye-bye. <laughs>
This is a decimal fraction, and it tells us how much of the show is already over. If you subtract this number from one, you'll know how much of the show is going to come. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Madman, your mission is to eat only numbers that are less than 0.5. When you encounter a number, you'll have until the count of three to make your decision. And beware the contemptible Mr. Glitch. I he will know. eat you if you are wrong. Mathman, 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 Mathman. That's less. <laughs> Too smart. Mathman, Mathman, Mathman. Less than 0.5. Mathman, 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 Mathman. <laughs> That's less too. <laughs> Less than 0.5. Mathman, 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 Mathman. Wow. Must be less. Rats. Mathman, 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 Mathman. That was fun. Now I'm going to tend to catch us. <laughs> the story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Monday, 9.43 a.m., and nominations for Oscar had just come out in the greater Los Angeles area. Oscar saw his shadow and went back in, so we were in for another six weeks of winter. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly. The boss is Thad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. Morning, George. Hi, Kate. How was your weekend? Not bad. Split a pair. Little League baseball team you coach? Uh-huh. We won the first and dropped the second in extra innings, 77 to 76. Real heartbreaker. 77 to 76. Yeah, we just weren't hitting. What are you looking for? Our team stats. You know, statistics. Oh? I have a team meeting tonight at the Bootery. The Bootery? Irwin's Bootery, the sponsor of our team. Ah, here they are. I had Debbie run our team's stats on our computer. Our team's batting average as a whole is just a little over 200. We can't hope to get into the series with that kind of stick work. I don't follow baseball, George. We've only got one 300 hitter, Kate, and she had the flu over the weekend. Is a 300 hitter good, George? Yep, a 300 hitter is very good. Now, here's how you figure batting averages, Kate. Let's say a player gets up to bat 14 times in a game. Isn't that a lot of times for one player to bat in one game? It's not the way we play. And let's say that player gets five hits. You know, like singles, doubles, triples. Uh-huh. Well, the way you figure a player's batting average is this. You divide the number of times at bat, in this case, 14, into the number of hits she got, in this case, five. Let's see, 14 into 5 is 0.357. The decimal points aren't lined up, George. Darn it. Even the coach makes mistakes. But boy, if we could all hit like that. If your team isn't hitting, how do you score 76 runs? <laughs> A lot of walks. Monday. Oh? Did you know someone was waiting to see us? Oh, my gosh. I forgot. Ask her in, please. I completely forgot about her, Kate. It's Maureen O'Reilly. Read about her in the paper. The woman with the Maltese pigeon. Yep. She needs protection. Good morning, Miss O'Reilly. Sorry to keep you waiting. Understandable. I'm Kate Monday. This is my partner, George Franklin. George. George, this is Maureen. Oh, really? No, O'Reilly. Won't, won't you be seated? We understand you need protection. From what? You know about my bird. 
Ma'am? The Maltese pigeon? Only that it's valuable. Valuable isn't the word. It's worth a king's ransom. I'm going to exhibit it for the general public tomorrow at the art museum, and I'm afraid someone may attempt to steal it. Can you help me? Yes, uh, but first, uh, who do you believe might steal it? Desperate men, Mr. Frankly. Desperate men who will stop at nothing. Have they been in contact with you, Miss O'Reilly? Not specifically, but they've been after the bird for years. They want to possess it. You have to help me, Mr. Frankly. Let's take a look at the exhibit room. We'll go right now. I I'll, I'll drive. No need. Here's a floor plan of the museum wing. We can set our exhibit anywhere in there. If we're going to secure this exhibit room... There's an awful lot of open area here and here. Yes, but I want as many people as possible to see the bird. But if you think it may be stolen, it would be better to put it in a small room, easier to protect. I understand, Miss Monday. I would suggest you put it in this area. According to the scale of the floor plan, one inch represents five feet. This room is four inches long. That's 20 feet. And three inches wide. That's 15 feet wide. How many people can fit in a room that's only 20 feet by 15 feet? We'll gather the people outside of the room and let them in in groupings of 50 people at a time. There are only two doors, so we'll station policemen at both of them. That sounds safe. We'll let the people enter here and exit here. It'll be as safe as a church, Miss O'Reilly. Please, call me Maureen. Yes, sir. What times will your exhibit be open, Miss O'Reilly? From five to eight for the next three days. Three hours a day for three days. That's a total of nine hours in all. If we move 50 people in and out in, let's say, what's a good guess? I don't know. How long would you guess that people might like to look at the bird, Ms. O'Reilly? Well, I suppose that depends on how fascinating they find it. But as a rough estimate, I'd say five minutes. OK. 50 people in five minutes. There are 12 five-minute segments in one hour. That's 12 groups. 12 groups of 50. 12 fives are 60. So 600 people can see the bird every hour, Ms. O'Reilly. Oh, that would be a thrill. And you said your exhibit would be open for a total of nine hours? Yes, George. Let's see. Nine sixes are 54. So 5,400 people may get their eyes full. When and how will you be transporting the Maltese pigeon to the museum, Miss O'Reilly? Well, I'd rather not say how, but we will have it at the exhibit entrance of the museum tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. If you could have your police meet me there. I'll be there myself. <sighs> so will I. Don't worry, Miss O'Reilly. We'll take care of everything. I can't thank you enough. But remember, people are after the Maltese pigeon, so you must be careful, because they are desperate men. Who will stop at nothing. Exactly. Thank you again. Until the morrow. I can hardly wait to lay my eyes on. Me too, George, but I guess we'll have to wait till tomorrow afternoon. Did you say something, Maureen? Kate? Forget it, George. Fine. All clear? Yeah. The next day, George and I met Ms. O'Reilly at the museum and watched as the well-protected Maltese pigeon was loaded off the truck and into the secure museum. The piece of statuary was gently uncrated by the museum's assistant curators, highly trained specialists used to handling such priceless artifacts. Gently! Please, gently! Careful, gentlemen. Careful! This bird is worth a, a king's, king's ransom. ransom. I'll do it.
lights, please. It's beautiful, Miss O'Reilly. It sure is, Maureen. What did it eat? The largest sapphire in the world. The Gosden sapphire. Everyone will now leave the room. We'll place an armed guard at either door. No one can get in here until they open the doors at 5 o'clock. It should be totally safe. Your bird, I mean. Thank you so much. If you need us, we'll be at MathNet. Gentlemen, would you remove this crate, please? The rest of the day was pretty routine, and before we knew it, it was quitting time. About time to pack up, Kate. Uh-huh. Gonna stop by the museum on your way home, George? I'd like to, but I've got a little league meeting tonight. Oh, yeah. Mathnet, frankly. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Maureen. How's everything? What? We'll be right there. What is it? It was Maureen. Uh-huh. The Maltese pigeon has been stolen. Marine. Well, I'm afraid I did something rather untoward. She screamed. <sighs> then she fainted. Are you all right? I mean, you didn't faint on anything, did you? 100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. Corporate funding is provided by IBM. At IBM, we believe education is the key to the future. We are pleased to help support Square One TV as an innovative way to introduce young people to the exciting world of mathematics. Predators must kill to survive, and yet these hunters are often less than perfect, as you'll see on The Best of Wild America, Great Escapes. A special presentation, Sunday night at 7. You're watching KTCA-TV, Channel 2. Sesame Street is brought to you locally by the Sven and C. Emil Berglund Foundation, the Lund Food Stores of the Twin Cities area, Target Stores, meeting the shopping needs of Minnesota families for 25 years, Bellini Children's Designer Furniture in Edina, furniture designed to last from crib to college, by Minnesota's dairy farmers and all the healthful products they provide, and by the New Horizon Child Care Centers, where love and learning grow.